Hello, my name is Rolf and welcome to our YouTube channel. Let me tell you about the place where the jungle meets the ocean. The ocean is bluer than my shirt and the service is the best I've ever experienced. It's a paradise for vegan, but not too bad for normal people like myself either. Now, did I really just say that? Normal people? I'm not normal, but neither are you if you're a vegan. Because if you eat vegan dessert, you're really not normal. It doesn't taste as good as a good, greasy, sugary, normal dessert. But if you disagree, comment down below and please subscribe to our brand new YouTube channel. Let me bring you all in to the house of Aya. So let's kick everything off by talking about the sweets. At Palmaya, there's two kind of sweets you can book, either with a bathtub or without. The ones that comes with a bathtub also comes with pool access. We booked the one that comes without a bathtub and the room was stunning. We didn't film too much inside the room because we basically spent most of our days outside. But as you can see, it's just a beautiful room. But beautiful isn't everything. The performance of the room is just as important. And let me tell you guys, the performance of that bed was remarkable. I slept the whole night and my wife didn't get any attention. Of course, we can't talk about a suite without talking about the views. And as you can see, the views from the terrace was extraordinarily beautiful. We had a sea view and on the back end of the suite, we had a view that looked throughout the jungle and it had the most insane sunsets you could ever imagine. This place have four restaurants. They have Mediterranean, they have Asian, they have Mexican, and they have international food. Everything is based on plants, plant-based foods, but you can get meat alternatives, meat and fish. And it's really, really good. So this is the pathway to one of the restaurants that serves Mediterranean food. The food here is really good and the pathway looks like this. So we are on the way to the restaurant Mar di Olivio. I will take you through a dining experience there. It's impossible to recreate the actual dining experience, but let's see what we can do in our very first video. And trust me, we will get a lot better at this. To start everything off, I of course needed a beer. And they also brought some baba ganoush and focaccia and breadsticks on the side. This is actually really tasty, it's made out of vegetables. And this is probably why my BMI isn't as it should be. I ordered a main course as a starter, a risotto with shrimp. And I don't know if that is bad ordering shrimp at a vegan resort. My wife, on the other hand, ordered artichokes, which is a smart decision. The same as her main course, chicken quinoa salad. Following the anti-hero theme at this resort, I ordered a ribeye steak. Yeah, not exactly vegan, but it could be served as a mushroom if you wanted to. But it's very tasty as meat, just so I have mentioned it. Over to something more pleasant than my bad food habits. Look at the amazing view of the hotel from the restaurant. Walking next to one of the beautiful pools at Palmaya. We are ready to relax into the laid back Caribbean beach ambience and the primal delight of sand beneath our feet. Seasonal delights, ve vegan, vegetarian, meat, fish, simple, delicious, comforting, just as home cooking was meant to be. We are on the way to Tsukasa and you will very soon understand why this was our absolute favorite restaurant. Just look at this extraordinary view that you can sit and chill to and eat delightful snacks to all day long if you want. 
And the best thing? Everything at this resort is all-inclusive. Here you can see how the menu works. You basically get a menu, there is no price, there is just a lot of items, and you can choose a starter, main course, and dessert. You can also choose between different juices and smoothies. I really recommend the chocolate smoothie as it's created from fresh chocolate, the plant and not the processed chocolate that you usually eat. I also have to mention before I forget it that they serve daily mocktails. A mocktail is a cocktail without alcohol. And they also have cocktails and alcoholic beverages. And the cocktails are really really good and they actually make vegan cocktails too. Which was very interesting and some of them were actually better than the normal cocktail. Over to another recommendation is the beetroot mousse that are served with some chips that are made of some special kind of sweet potato. And my wife ordered a tomato soup that are served inside a bread which was really good. Another day with steak for me to main course and asparagus on the side. And my wife she ate hers. Just another quick shot of the view. Just because it's not what you get everywhere. On the way back from the restaurant, I had to try to make some shots of the nice lit pool. On this channel, we want to recreate the feeling of being somewhere. It is utterly impossible to do, and especially when the filming is as poor as this. We are sorry, and we promise to do a lot better. Now let's get ready for the restaurant Lek. Lek actually means play in Norwegian. Yeah, it doesn't in Mexico. But now I'm actually gonna prove to you that I can eat vegan food after all and not just steak to every single meal. So let me bring you into this Mexican vegan experience. Yeah, that's what they serve. Mexican food, but vegan style. It should be good when it's in Mexico. And to kick everything off with the starter, we ate a lot of nothing because we forgot to film on this new YouTube channel. I'm sorry guys, we did a whole lot better with the main course. So here you see a pepper filled with mushrooms in some kind of sauce and it was really tasty and there's no meat in it just to have mentioned it. We also got some eggplant that are served in a special way and Ida got some tortilla served with more vegetables and everything was really tasty. Except when you come to the dessert, because the dessert is vegetables and that doesn't taste dessert. And here we are walking on a bridge in the jungle. No, we are actually walking on the way to one of the restaurants called Ume, which is an Asian restaurant at Palmaya. It is really tasty and they actually serve vegan sushi, where they have used watermelon or similar kind of fruits and vegetables to simulate the feeling of fish. I'm sorry to say we didn't film inside, but at least we filmed the outside area of the restaurant. Here you can see another restaurant I only filmed the outside of. It's the food truck and they have the most delicious vegan tacos. Let's talk Infinity Edge Pool. As you can see, there are large, large, large pools around the property. But notice one special thing. Notice how few people there are. And notice how insanely clean the pools are. Even the drains in the pools is the cleanest I've seen in any hotel. Trust me, you do need pools in Mexico. But let's bring back the question about the people. Why can't you see any other people around in this video? It's literally because the hotel only book at 50% capacity so that the guests that actually stay there will have a unique experience with unique service and more bespoke feel to what they encounter at the hotel. And what you can see in front of you right here is the pool bar. And here you can see the other side of it. Yes, this is the other side of the pool bar. It's a large bar full of mosquitoes at night, but also a really scenic view at this wonderful bar. 
They also make really, really good drinks, as I mentioned previously. They are using vegan recipes to make almost any kind of drink. And thankfully, they made my favorite drink, Mai Tai. And they made a really, really good one as well. We can't talk about the Riviera Maya without talking beaches. Originally called Cancun Tulum, was actually renamed in 1999 after a push from the mayor in Solidaridad. And the 80 mile long coastline is as much Caribbean as anywhere else in the Caribbean. One question that often comes to mind when we are talking Mexico is sargassum. Sargassum is seaweed that comes from the Great Atlantic Sargassum Belt, which spans from Brazil to South Africa. And the seaweed can be seen at shore along the Yucatan coast and up to South Florida. As you can see, the beaches at Palmaya are pretty clean. They have people working to clean the beaches every day and sometimes were worse and sometimes were better. A good thing is that the service also includes the sunbed. So if you want a drink, you can get it at the sunbed. If you want food, you can get it at the sunbed. If you want anything else, you can get it at the sunbed. That's how it works. And Freddy or Ricardo or Fernando are all coming and asking if you want anything at the beach. Or if you're laying by the pool, they are coming towards you asking if you want anything at all. And remember, when it's all inclusive, it's free. There are also plenty of showers when you get up from the beach, so you really can get rid of the sand from your feet or whatever body parts it gets into. So, let's take a walk into the gym. It's a cool jungle pathway into the gym. And now you will learn something about me. And that is, we don't joke when we talk about gym. This is probably the most thorough review of the whole hotel. They have beautiful rolled towels inside the gym, which makes a very exclusive feel to the whole place. You also have fresh water with fruit for your convenience when training. The first thing we can take a look at is the dumbbell rack from Techno Gym. They have dumbbells from 4 kilos and all the way up to 20 kilos, which literally not this all the way up, so you have to run Mio sets or similar to actually get stronger. Or if you are weak, <laughs> it's okay with 20 kilos as well. But for most people that have worked out for a while, 20 kilos is not a lot of weight when it comes to dumbbell. Here you can see the Techno Gym elliptical machines and treadmills, which are of the expensive kind and they are actually very good. And now let's take a look at the hotel's most useless purchase. A machine from Techno Gym, or as I call it, a mirror. Like, why can't hotel just understand what people who work out actually want? Like, a barbell from Eleiko and a squat rack and maybe a pull-up bar. Then you have everything you need for a really good workout. Overall, the gym has a really good vibe. It's not large, but it's airy because it's not too overcrowded with equipment. And for sure not too overcrowded with people. But the jungle-ish feel to the whole gym with the large windows viewing the mystical jungle, the palm trees, all the animal noises you can hear through them. And the green color really gives energy to your workout. It's something special about training in the middle of the jungle. And one more thing about the gym that was really good the air conditioning and you can see the air vents over the mirror the whole way throughout the building. Here you can also see my wife is doing split squats. Something that is a great exercise when you don't have too much weight that you can put on. Basically because you get more range of motion during the exercise you can get a really good tie and ass workout with less kilos. Now, it wouldn't be a good gym review without some workout tips, would it? And we that are living on the road, we really need to be creative on how we use the weights so we can get enough resistance on very, very well-trained muscles. Or, 
at least my wife needs to do that. Over to another very good exercise. One arm shoulder press. As you can see, my wife executed perfectly and it has a lot of stabilization to it. So you're using your core muscles and a lot of stabilization in your shoulder. And just to mention it, she is using 18 kilos and weighing only 54 kilograms herself. How can I get an ass like that? You might be wondering. And this is one exercise that would help greatly with building a wonderful gluteus muscle as well as the split squat you saw earlier in this video. That is it with the workout tips for now. Since my wife is a personal trainer, I don't want to give everything away for free this early. What would a workout be without friends? Here you can see one of the spiders we saw during our stay, and this is definitely not the largest. They even have several meditation and yoga decks for people who want a good workout for either their brain or their body. What you can see in front of you is psychedelic mushroom. No, you don't actually get psychedelic mushrooms there. It's a meditation place or they have different classes there. We participated both meditation, yoga, soul reading and all sorts of things. In particular, I don't like soul reading that much because I don't believe that anybody can read my soul. But I really enjoyed the cacao ceremony. You get into the class, you lay down on some mats, you get served some fresh cacao from the plant, you drink it, you close your eyes. It was beautiful music. The woman who sang really had an incredible voice and you get really calm and collected and yeah, you just get filled in your mind with good energy from the cacao plant. And it helps when you love chocolate as well. Let's talk animals. You can see a bunch of animals around the property and you can see everything from monkeys and jaguars to snakes and iguanas. They even have some animals I've never seen before. Did I mention they have three cenotes on their property? One of them you can swim in and that is located at their wonderful spa. We never did visit the cenote in the spa where we actually could swim but as you can see we filmed uh, the other cenotes that they have on the property and what I really like about what they have done here is that they have built the buildings around the cenotes and actually enhancing the nature and the cenote itself so that you can get the beautiful wilderness tied to the buildings at this wonderful resort and I really feel that they have captured the whole jungle feel all the way. And just look at the images. It's beautiful. What else can you say? It's just beautiful. Now, let me take you guys out for a run while I talk about safety in Mexico. So is Mexico actually safe or should you worry about drug trafficking and getting murdered or whatever you are worried about. In Mexico, the population is almost 130 million people. In Playa del Carmen, it's 304,000 citizens. Playa del Carmen is considered one of the safest cities in Mexico, even though there has been some recent murders and drug-related instances. So maybe it's not the safest anymore, or is it? I don't know. But what I can say from our own experience, we felt very safe inside the area of uh, Playa Car, which is where Palmaya is located. It's a gated community that consists of luxury residents and luxury resorts, basically. And most of them actually have five stars. So it should be a really, really safe area in general. And yeah, we didn't have any trouble at all. And after we stayed in Playa Car, we actually stayed one week in Playa del Carmen in uh, almost in Fifth Avenue. And it felt a little bit more unsafe, but still 
I didn't feel unsafe in particular. And now we are in Tulum as I'm recording this video and I still feel kind of safe. So I guess it's all about what you do yourself. What kind of person are you? Are you one of the guys who wants to explore drugs and actually buy drugs from the cartel? Yeah, it doesn't sound very smart to me. Yeah, if you are drinking all night long, flashing your Rolex watch, it's like begging to be robbed. I wouldn't personally do that. You would probably be fine, but some places it's, it's just not smart to do it. And I would say that that's not smart anywhere in the world. Like in the United States, we've been traveling there a lot as well. And there are some places there I felt unsafe as well. You know, it's not in particular safe everywhere in the United States. And you have some really dangerous cities in the United States as well. In Europe, you can feel unsafe. There's a lot of cities in Europe that are kind of dangerous actually, and especially areas in the cities. And there's a lot of pickpocketing in Europe. Even in Norway, if you walk certain areas in Oslo, you're unsafe. That's how the world works. Like every major city in the world have crime. And you should always be cautious about crime and what's around you. Maybe you should be a little bit more cautious about your surroundings in Mexico in general. Because if someone is pulling a weapon, if it is starting some kind of beef at a local workshop or anywhere, you should be aware of it so you could get away from the area and not be caught in a shootout. Even though I think it's highly unlikely that would happen because tourists almost never get in a crossfire. It has happened, but it's very, very rare. So try Mexico. It's a beautiful, beautiful country and it has so much to offer. So why don't start in Palmaya, the best hotel at the whole Riviera.